What's up? To explain the etiology of polycythemia, we have to recall physiology. On chromosome 9 located gene which is called JEC2 gene. JEC2 gene encodes JEC2 kinase protein. In order to understand what happens in polycythemia, we have to know how from gene we get a protein. So basically we have to recall how protein synthesis occurs. We have a central dogma in molecular biology, DNA RNA protein. This dogma tells that the genetic information in chromosomal DNA molecule has to be copied to RNA molecule and carried to ribosomes where proteins produced. And only proteins can physically provide the function and regulation of the crucial metabolical processes. So basically, JEC2 gene on chromosome 9 is a number of nucleotides that form DNA molecule. DNA molecule consists of two strands, its coding strand and non-coding strand. And to use this information in the gene, information must be carried to ribosomes where proteins are produced. So DNA molecule for this purpose makes a copy of the gene in form of parametric RNA molecule. This process called transcription. And this results in production of parametric RNA molecule. Let's suppose that our sequence of nucleotides located in a coding region that called exon. So this sequence of nucleotides will not be removed by RNA splicing and in form of matrix RNA molecule will be delivered to ribosomes. Ribosomes read nucleotide sequence in matrix RNA molecule in codons and include complementary to that codon amino acid. In this case, it's valine and glycine. Let's suppose that valine is amino acid in 617 position, and a particular amount of amino acids form protein. In our case, this protein is JEC2 kinase. The function of JEC2 kinase is to activate cellular pathways that are responsible for cellular proliferation. And activation of pathways occurs by phosphorylation. In order to activate pathway, JEC2 kinase uses ATP molecule. By ATP molecule, it phosphorylates proteins in this pathway. And as a byproduct, ADP is released. Important that JEC2 kinase involved primarily in regulation of myeloid cells. To explain what are myeloid cells, we have to know that hematopoiesis can be subdivided on myelopoiesis and lymphopoiesis. And myelopoiesis can be subdivided on erythropoiesis that produce red blood cells, thrombopoiesis that produce megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed, monocytopoiesis that produce monocytes, and finally granulocytopoiesis that produce neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. Also, some pathways are more specific to a certain type of cell. For example, JEC2 kinase by activation of jec stat pathway stimulate mostly the production of red blood cells. By activation of PI3K AKTA pathway, JEC2 kinase stimulates the production of megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed. By activation of RAS pathway, it stimulates the production of granulocytes and monocytes. So this results in production of monocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Important that JEC2 kinase serves as a conductor. It receives signal by cytokines and only then begins to activate intracellular pathways. What? Recall that because cytokines have protein structure and proteins are polar molecules, they cannot diffuse into the cell. They require some receptor that on the surface of the cell will receive signal and transmit the signal into the nucleus. So when cytokines act on cytokine receptor on cellular surface, it requires JEC2 kinase to deliver the signal into the nucleus. So basically, JEC2 kinase is just the conductor of the signal. In normal condition, JEC2 kinase cannot decide to increase the mitotic rate or to leave it as it is. Because JEC2 kinase do not know how to regulate, this enzyme just phosphorylates or remains passive. But we have a certain organs that provide selective regulation of blood cell count. For example, kidneys by secretion of erythropoietin mainly provide activation of jec stat pathway and thereby provide increase in production of red blood cells. So by this they regulate red blood cell level. Liver by secretion of thrombopoietin mainly force jectokinase to activate PA3K AKTA pathway. 
that stimulate the production of megakaryocytes from which platelets are formed. So by this liver regulates platelets level. And bone marrow microenvironment, by secretion of granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, force jectokinase to activate RAS pathway that cause increase in production of granulocytes and monocytes. So, as we see, because organs that regulate blood cell count cannot act directly, they secrete cytokines, and cytokines activate jectokinase and in turn jectokinase stimulate cell proliferation rate. Grow better! So, for example, if the amount of red blood cells decrease, kidneys sense that the amount of red blood cells is low. So they secrete erythropoietin that acts on erythropoietin receptor, and this results in activation of jectokinase. Erythropoietin force jectokinase to activate JEK-STAT pathway, so in response to this, the production of red blood cells begin to increase. And by this we maintain the normal amount of red blood cells in our blood. Important that when red blood cells reach normal values, kidneys begin to decrease the production of erythropoietin. So now the stimulation of jectokinase will decrease, so the stimulation of JEK-STAT pathway will decrease, and thereby the production of red blood cells will decrease. And everything is tip top until mutation in JEK2 gene occur. What's wrong with this one? Oh, nothing, Tommy. It's tip top. It's just I'm not sure about the color. The most common type of mutations called single nucleotide polymorphism. Basically, this mutation substitute one nucleotide in DNA structure with another nucleotide. And this simple substitution, in our case, will have a dramatic consequences. So, in DNA molecule, due to a single nucleotide polymorphism, guanine is substituted by thymine. Thereby, in non-coding strength will be adenine, in matrix RNA molecule will be uracil. And now the triplet, triple uracil, encodes not valine, but phenylalanine, which is totally different amino acid. So, mutation in DNA molecule results in production of jectokinase that has valine in 617 position. Now, why is this mutation is so dangerous? Recall that in normal condition, jectokinase is active only when it receives signal from the cytokines. But this mutation causes persistent activation of jectokinase. So now the state of jectokinase is not determined by the cytokines. With this mutation, jectokinase becomes constantly active and basically begins to function on its own. And interesting that this mutation causes disproportional activation of intracellular pathways. Such mutated jectokinase cause mild activation of RAS pathway, and this results in mild increase in production of monocytes and all granulocytes, particularly in basophils. It causes moderate activation of PA3K AKTA pathway, this results in moderate increase in megakaryocytes and thereby in platelet production. And the most significant activation occurs to jet start pathway, that results in huge increase in red blood cells in the blood. The major structural component of red blood cells is hemoglobin. So with increase in amount of erythrocytes in the bloodstream, the concentration of hemoglobin increase. Also because red blood cells determine blood hematocrit, with increase in red blood cells, hematocrit increase. Also important that because the level of red blood cells in the blood is extremely high, erythropoietin production will be extremely low, because there is no point to additionally stimulate production of red blood cells, which is already substantially higher than normal. On, think about it. <laughs> now, what are the criteria for polycythemia? First of all, it's the presence of increased red blood cell count simultaneously with increase in hemoglobin level more than 165 in men and 160 in women, in combination with increased hematocrit, more than 49 in men and 48 in women. The second criteria is overgrowth of three myeloid lineages, 
which are erythrocytes, thrombocytes and granulocytes with monocytes. This condition also called panmyelosis. Also important that megakaryocytes that are produced are mature and different in size, so called pleomorphic. And the presence of JAK2 axon 12 mutation, which is basically the mutation in DNA molecule that we can determine, or the presence of mutated JAK2 kinase with phenylalanine in 617 position, constitutes three major criteria of polycythemia vera. And also we have one minor criteria, which is subnormal serum erythropoietin level. The presence of three major criteria, or two major and one minor criteria, according to current guidelines, permits you to make a diagnosis of polycythemia vera. Okay. Fine. Yep. Ciao! What's that mean? Ciao. It's Italian. It means food. 